Um, can, can I, um, do you have a moment for a little excursion here? Or I, I've been researching the children now. I'm, I'm gonna do a page on our website on the eight, well, actually beyond the eight children who were deported from the Sum region um, over the course of, over the course of this um, the occupation. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the other children too, but I'm especially now for now focused on the eight who were deported, uh, seven to Auschwitz and one to Sobibor. Um, and uh, we have pictures and know a lot about five or so of them, or not a lot about, we, we at least have pictures of five of them and know something about them, but about three of them, we don't have pictures. Um, but um, while I was on the Memorial of the Shoah website, I, I, I tumbled on to, um, you know, it's, it lists what kinds of documentation they have for each person. It'll say internment, deportation. And for this particular girl who was a 16 year old girl who was deported in 1944, in, in uh, I think March or May of 1944, in Convoy 72. Her name was Paulette Kahn. For her, they had also another um, index field called Mentions in Film. So I, I clicked on, actually Mentions in Film, I clicked on it. And it turned out to be a, a Direction to a, uh, a link to a, an interview with a Holocaust survivor from Convoy 72 by the name of Jacques Goldstein. And in this interview, which was beautifully filmed and beautifully indexed, you know, so that the people that he mentioned, you know, I, you're, you're very familiar. I'm, I'm just not as familiar with the, with the Holocaust survivor transcripts as I'm sure you are. You are very familiar with them. Um, anyway, the, you know, I was impressed with that. And I was impressed with, here was Paulette Kahn. She was mentioned. And, um, you know, when you read through the content list, you could see where her name came up. And so, you know, I went to that, uh, this Jacques Goldstein himself was a marvelously interesting uh, man, both resistant and survivor, you know, just incredible person of incredible fortitude. I went and listened to the, the sections um, having to do with, you know, putatively having to do with Paulette Kahn. Paulette Kahn, right. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I know something about her family from, I have a letter of her father. He tried to get out of the yellow star uh, obligation and he cites some family background that, that justifies his appeal, uh, motivates his appeal. Nobody was allowed to get out yeah, of it. Right. But they thought there was a, anyway. So I have that and I have a couple other things related to the family. Um, but um, so this section where Paulette Kahn is mentioned, it turns out to be um, from Drancy to Auschwitz on the train. She's in the same car as Jacques Goldstein and Jacques Goldstein's wife. Jacques Goldstein is, who's born in 1920, so he would be about 24, and his wife. And they were both Polish Jewish immigrants. They had found refuge in the South in Lyon, but they were in the resistance too, according, you know, according to the testimony. And they went to Paris, and it's in Paris that they got arrested. And within a day or two, they were put on this train to Auschwitz in which Paulette Kahn happened to be there with her parents. Um, she had some siblings who somehow escaped, but she was there, 16 year old 
a girl with her with her parents who are somewhat older, um, you know, older parents. And Jock, uh, he describes the car and a hundred people jammed in one, one urinal for the whole, one toilet for the whole, yeah. whole, yeah. Um, And um, he's, he says, well, we're lucky to have our, our backs to the wall. Um, And, um, you know, so he's asked about people around him. He says, and in the first, he, he mentions Paula Khan twice. The first time he mentions her, we sort of asked, does he remember people from the, um, from the, you know, the transport? And he says, there was Paulette Kahn and her father and mother. Okay, that's, that's what he says. That's the first mention, okay? And then later on in the, in the thing, it comes up again and, um, some other, I mean, he goes through some other things and he's asked about it. Um, and it's, it's as the train is uh, sort of nearing this, the um, siding at Auschwitz. And he, and he um, you know, he first says, uh, you know, about how uh, these, pe- these people think we're, we're going to work, you know, we're going to going here, coming here to work, he said, and he says, somewhat disdainfully, nursing mothers, <laughs> you know, with children are coming to work, you know, uh, um, you know, but it's sort of like he's already survived, and you know, he's, he looks back, this is what makes it so, uh, you know, powerful and, and pregnant in a way is, it's a consciousness that's, that's present and, and future, uh, future so to speak it's it's like uh, uh, it, it, it brings it brings that judgment you know from from what's known afterward right. back to the scene and so uh, and then at that point he, he, he's, he's he's talking about how you know unbearably crowded it was and then then he says, and there was that um, that gamine. It's a gamine. It's like a you know a young a young female kid kid. You know, uh, 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 a po- oh, and then there was Paulette Kahn, Kahn that gamine. And he said, and um, and then she she put on her bathing suit. She put on her bathing suit, um, and he. And he, he, he's, 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 as he's remembering, he's, he hits his head, you know, like, um, and, and he says, that was idiotic, he says, but, but other people were singing and other people, you know, it was like a, a, a kind of a, a bedlam, you know, and, and but, but his, I, I just thought it was so, so we don't have a picture of her, but we have, we have a, uh, a man who who felt something about her, you know, who knows what three days, you know, um, you know, but he remembered her, and he remembered her putting on her bathing suit, or that she put on her bathing suit. Oh, I found that really interesting, and we have an ongoing conversation about survivor testimony and the value of it. And we, we all pull different things from it. And the thought of the 16 year old girl is, um, it's the kind of detail that we don't usually look for, but you knew of her and you tracked it down and it's, it's, it's valuable. I'm glad we took the time to talk about that. 